Mm-hmm. 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 UG also there? No, sir. UG from uh, Dr. NGP IT. Kalapati Road. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, Dr. Dandabani was your principal that time? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He was oh. my principal. Sir. Mm-hmm. He's from IIT Madras. Well-known person for no, me. No, he was a... He was a no, basically, he did his PhD, but he is basically from mm-hmm. CIT. CIT, yes, yes, sir. CIT mechanic. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. You are right. <clears throat> I have to add a old student of your name. Right. Same Dash name? Stalin. So, very old. He is okay, around no, 40, 44 years old. <laughs> okay, uh, sir. Dash and Dathra Kumar. That's how I can oh. remember. Yes. Okay, sir. Okay, very peculiar sir. name, you know. Names are very peculiar. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> the scorecard is uh, century, cross century, no? I don't know. Uh, yes, sir. We have, uh, we have given YouTube streaming also, sir. Oh, so, okay. students have started joining the day. Good, good, good. Good. <laughs> Darni, ma'am, are you inside? Darni, ma'am? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I'm inside, ma'am. Okay. Lakshmi Priya, ma'am, have you joined? Ma'am, she is also there, ma'am. Okay. Lakshmi, ma'am, can you hear me? She's there? Ma'am, she's there. She has joined. Oh, okay, okay. So, why do we wait? Let's start then. Let's start. Okay, ma'am. A pleasant evening to one and all who have joined here. On behalf of Science and Humanities Department, Nehru Institute of Engineering and Technology, I welcome you all for the international level webinar on Path to International Success Through Quality and Affordable Higher Education. Today is the day we begin to learn to look through the eyes of others to find out and experience what the world is like for them. It is also the day we grow bigger. A friendly welcome and outstretched hand. I would like to invite Dr. Charlie Pakim Kamala, head of the department, Department of Science and Humanities, to welcome the gathering. A warm good evening to you all. Greetings from NATO Group of Institutions. NATO Group of Institutions which is from Kerala and Tamil Nadu, is rendering its education service crossing a half a decade. It has 22 institutions right from medical college, engineering colleges, law college, a separate campus for different uh, studies for aeronautics, arts and science college, and different B schools, and international school, and two kids school as well. One among the main uh, colleges, Nehru Institute of Engineering and Technology, a 14 years old college with eight engineering UG program and five PG programs. It has a PACA faculty group and well equipped laboratories, many centers of excellence and research centers as well. It's rendering it so educational service to students and faculty for the growth of our society. It is our policy that students must be given exposure for higher studies and for their career as well. So one such program has been arranged today. Um, I'm happy to be the convener of that program. At this juncture, I'm happy to welcome uh, Dr. P. Krishnadas, Chairman and Managing Trustee, Dr. P. Krishna Kumar, CEO and Secretary, Nehru Group of Institutions, Tamil Nadu and Kerala in this uh, in, in their absentia for their entire wholehearted support. 
Also, I am happy to welcome Dr. P. Maniarasan, Principal Nehru Institute of Engineering and Technology, who is the origin of this program to be organized. He is held up with some official meeting with university officials. So he is unable to take part, but he conveyed his wishes to us all. With pleasure, I welcome uh, Dr. Shankaran, Director Arrow, the senior most faculty who presides this webinar today. Happy to welcome you, sir. Thank you. Thank it you very much. It's a pleasure to welcome the resource person, specialist of higher education, Ms. Nikita Devia, founder and, founder and principal consultant, Exponent Consultant Services, USA. Ma'am has very most experience with higher education um, as well as 20 years in education field. So I think we have, uh, uh, we will get the enrich ourselves with our knowledge in a variety manner. So we are very happy to be with us, ma'am. Welcome you. And I, it's, it, it's my privilege to welcome all heads of the uh, uh, departments. And I'm happy to welcome all the faculty members, AO, come HR, and all um, student friends from Nehru Institute of Engineering and Technology and Sister Concern, and many from outside colleges also. So I am wholeheartedly welcome all of you. Once again, I welcome you all. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for your wonderful welcome. Uh, the dreams of golden glory in the future will not come true unless high of heart and strong of hand by our own mighty deeds. We make them come true. With this wonderful quote, I invite Professor Shankaran, Director, Aeronautical Department, to give the presidential address. Sir. Uh, thank you. Uh, very good evening to our today chief guest, Nikita Madam. And Namaste, Madam. And then I welcome our Madam, Shalini Madam, uh, HOD of SNH, and other learned professors and the participants. It's, a, it's indeed a great pleasure for me to tell you my President's address on behalf of my management and my uh, beloved principal. Uh, first of all, uh, this set of program, what uh, we have brought in, Madam, here, uh, something related to higher studies and research, the opportunity, the opportunities there in abroad, find way back, three decades back, we all have to wait at least for a month to know which country one has to go, what is the provision available, what about the country facilities for education, and uh, no talk about research and all. I'm talking about uh, 25 years back. Uh, anyone wants to go, uh, first of all, they have to wait at least for a year or so to check out the details. And for which one has to go, Tamil Nadu, all have to go to their respective local capital to collect information. There are instances that I still remember. They used to go to uh, Delhi to check. And uh, days have gone with the wind now. Now things are very easy, and uh, for which Madam has come uh, to deliver a special pitch. And uh, being a founder of <coughs> ECS, the Exponent Consultant Services, is, is also I also heard about it long back. But the thing is, the message for the student is uh, my message as academician. First of all, you should check up the area of, of your interest. Uh, generally, what, uh, what happens is you uh, listen to the consultancy, but you don't give the full feedback on your dreams of what exactly, what you want to be, why you want to stand. So those things you have to uh, interact with the man. You should not be a you know, silent spectator. Uh, just uh, come and uh, listen to man like that. You should definitely interact. I'm sure you all will interact. Because this sort of platform is very, very important. We teachers, we keep talking about uh, equipping yourself with the knowledge. However, later on, we, we, uh, we, uh, we use a term in our aviation field, 
We are there to only to sit that you are equipped with the knowledge. We'll make the aircraft to what do you call it? Run the engine, taxiing out. Then take off also. We'll tell you. But where the aircraft has to land, that is in your hand. For which probably, madam, is the right person to guide you exactly where you have to land, which country you have to land, which university you have to land, which area you have to. <coughs> Uh, reach so these details probably she will be in a position to give you in volumes about it. Have a patience. And another message for students: once you are decided, you are going for higher studies. Your foremost duty right from the day one you joined in the college or you are in the pre-final years or final years, mingle with those students. Keep changing your. Uh, you know, dining with them or take a cafeteria when you go. Keep changing, interacting people, but uh, mostly from northern side and other than if you are if you hail from Tamil Nadu, keep interacting with the students from other states, and so on. So every day you should learn the culture and the knowledge or what's happening in and around your state and their state. Or in our country, and later on slowly we'll, we'll get an idea about uh, abroad studies and so on. So before uh, going opting for uh, studies in abroad, you should warm up yourself well. If I'm not wrong, pre-final years is the right time to get yourself uh, acquainted with all the uh, countries and all the universities. Where areas in which that particular university is specialized. So keep in mind that your dream should be fulfilled within a short span of time. The only alternative is such set of forum, such set of rather uh, uh, webinar. You have to use it as a springboard. I repeat the word like a springboard. You have to utilize it and choose your. Career and make your opportunities in abroad. With these few words, once again, I thank our beloved principal for having given the opportunity to deliver this presentation address. I am sure I interacted with the man who knows n number of languages. So some other languages you should know, learn. That is good. Example: Our former Prime Minister Narasimha Rao. He was doing 16 minor, rather minority government. He ran. This is the history. Says because of the skill what he has developed, right? Knowing the 16 language doesn't matter, but the interest he has shown to make use of all those what he has done. So, my dear student friends, kindly make use of this hour. Please do interact with Nikita, madam. I hope, I wish, this webinar. Will be very fruitful to one and all. With these few words, thanks for the opportunity again. I thank the management. I thank one and all. Thank you very much. My over to the MC desk. Thank you, sir. Art cannot be subordinate to its subject. Otherwise, it is not art but biography. Today, we have an eminent speaker, Miss Nikita Dehia, founder. and principal consultant at the exponent consultancy services usa she has started her career as a head da ad western region in the year 2001 later in the year 2011 she has started the exponent consultancy services she is the founder and principal consultant of exponent consultancy services she is a specialist in higher education in germany she gets invited by pan india prestigious universities to guide the students on a regular basis few universities among them are iit mumbai rajiv gandhi institute of technology mumbai iim ahmedabad pdpu university ahmedabad etc she has motivated hundreds of students till date through her lectures while imparting generalist informations at daad she realized that many students needed personal one on one counseling to realize their goal thus to fill this void exponent consultancy services was formed so that students should could be held hand and 
walked through this entire process. Ms. Nikita Dethia bestowed upon the Kojai Leadership Award in the year 2018 in San Francisco, USA, for exemplary work in guiding Indian students in Germany. She is socially associated with German connections for the development of the community, catalyzed donations, catalyzed eminent presence to the various NGOs. So with this brief, brief introduction, I am very much honored to invite Ms. Nikita Dethia to address the gathering. Ma'am, the stage is yours. Sir? Ma'am, she left the meeting. Is it? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yes, yes, I'll make a call to her. Artists kindly wait till the guest will join now. Ma'am, anybody here? Participants, a kind request. Please don't unmute your uh, video and audio. So, ma'am is uh, having some technical issues. She is trying to connect again. All of you kindly wait. Okay, ma'am.
Yes, ma'am has joined. Ma'am, you are you are not audible, ma'am. Ma'am, unmute yourself, ma'am. Okay, now I am audible. Yes. Thank you very much for the very warm welcome from the Nehru Group of Institutions. And when I, uh, when your principal, Dr. Manya Rasanji, he spoke to me, it was um, I was very excited to have an interaction because I have the fondest, um, how do you say, memories of Coimbatore, and I love the people of Coimbatore. So that's it, it's something like warmth and comfort zone, and I think the best people. Uh, come from Coimbatore. So I'm very excited to uh, deliver my talk. Um, let's begin. So before we jump into any kind of education, I think education is should be very holistic. Education just by itself would mean nothing if we do not keep into account what the in Indian and the international economic scenario is. So what does the Indian scenario look like? Uh, because of Corona and a couple other things that happened because of Corona, the GDP has slid down and unfortunately the rupee has weakened a little bit. What, what does that mean for us? That definitely means a looming depression. But here we are not going to talk about the negative impacts as, um, as ma'am and uh, um, Sir has very rightly mentioned we should find paths towards progress and prosperity. And how do, how do how does anybody do that? So the various Indian students, not just you, but uh, thousands and lakhs of Indian students, what they face is lack of relevant jobs, the unemployability after they finish their graduation. And that's not a very, very good thing. It dampens the spirits and um, it takes you a little haywire. One of the way to expand, to come out of that mold, to break that and come out of it is becoming the shark in your field. Now, shark is my favorite animal of all the animals in the world. Why do I like shark? Because she, uh, she or he is a ginormous structure that I see in movies and things like that. But did you know if shark is kept in a little fish pot, she just grows up to six to eight inches instead of the eight feet that we normally look. So what happens is we, you all are sharks in your respective fields. And if you give yourself the right ambience and the right surrounding, just the way these two gentlemen have, sky is the limit for you. You know, there's no limit. And how does one expand one's horizon by traveling abroad or traveling out of one's hometown? And not just you, my friends, but thousands and lakhs of Indian students are going abroad for the reasons as, of course, it's a personal growth, but most importantly, it's globalizing oneself, understanding where we stand on the international picture at strengthening leadership skills. Leadership skills is not raising a voice, but changing, um, finding new ways and strategies to achieve your goal and to iron out the various problems. Finding new career path. What does a new career path mean? It means that whatever is the demand of the industry match to that. So, of course, you're studying all the wonderful subjects that you are now, but then now aligning yourself with the demand of the industry is the call of the hour. Networking. Networking is very important. I mean, today we are in two different time zones, but we are on a common platform connecting to each other. What a better way than uh, this is exact example of networking. And for this reason, more than four lakhs Indian students are going abroad each year. I repeat, whether you go or not, four lakh students are already going abroad. And this year it's going to increase to probably five lakh or five lakh fifteen thousand. The numbers will trickle down by December. And these are the countries where they mostly go to. Um, generally, the thing is that some years back, it was so sad that if, you know, if you hear anybody thinking of going abroad, the first country that comes to mind is America. And everybody says, yeah, I'm going to America and I've got like 10 percent or some scholarship or this, that and all. But when you look at the whole package, an Indian student has to pay 
close to hundred thousand dollars or hundred and fifty thousand US dollars. So an Indian student is that kind of a debt to go and study in America. And then other countries have mushroomed up, which have not ma stabilized on the mark of quality. Now, students of Coimbatore or Karnataka, we place a great deal of importance on quality. That cannot be compromised under any condition. And that is one of the reasons Germany is topping the chart because it is qualitatively very high. And there are so many German institutions which are on the international map of education. And that is the reason so many Indian students are going to Germany. Why should you consider going to Germany? Because your professors are telling so, or because I tell you so? No. Let us understand in facts and figures why are we considering Germany as a destination for higher education. The most important factor is that it is free to affordable education. What does that mean? It means that close to 80 to 85 percent of the universities of the total number of universities are offering 100 percent scholarship. So there are 427 institutions of higher education and close to 85 percent are offering 100 percent scholarship, which is inbuilt. It is part of the program. It's part of the study. Program. Ma'am, sorry for the interruption. It is Shanli, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, are you presenting any PPT, ma'am? Oh, yes, I am. Is it not there? Can you not see it's, the ocean? It's ocean? not visible. Oh, yes, oh, oh, I apologize. I really apologize. No. I think we did not do the no presentation. No, no, no. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for telling me. I will begin from the beginning. I'm so sorry. I apologize. We begin. Ma'am, no worries. Is it is it visible now? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Now it is visible. Okay. Carry on. So what I do is I will run I will run through everything from the beginning just because I have taken efforts to make this presentation and it should also be visible for you people. So we spoke about the economic uh, current scenario in India. Then we also speak about the looming depression, but most importantly, we are talking about how the relevant jobs are not being found by students. And then we speak about expanding our horizons and connecting to the right kind of people and stepping out of one's comfort zones and the various reasons to study in a foreign country, to find new career paths and to network. And most importantly, we are looking at these statistics where Indian students are going. So more than four lakh students are going and they are uh, now looking at Germany because it is very economical. At the same time, it is very, very high in quality and German universities stock the charts. The various reasons to consider Germany is the affordable education. We were right here. So there are 427 institutions in all. And uh, as I mentioned, about 85% offer um, close to 100% scholarship, which is inbuilt as part of the program. One another attractive reason for the students is the wide variety of courses that they get to choose from. So there are 22,000 programs that one can choose from, from whichever field that you come from. So, and that's the reason thousands of international researchers come year after year to Germany from various parts of the world. And when we look at all of this, we must be thinking, oh, when it is everything is funded, the institution must be in shambles because it takes a great amount of money to run any institution. Well, the institutions are world class and very competent faculty. And uh, it gives me pride to say that uh, I have visited almost all of the German um, universities in Germany. When I used to work, I have worked for the German government. I was head of the DAAD, a very prestigious organization called German Academic Exchange Service. And it, DAD has a presence in 173 countries of the world. And I was the first non-German to become the head and I think that's a matter of great pride. And uh, under that position, I have visited almost all of the universities in Germany. And I 
see that that the faculty there one of the one of the very important points is that the faculty needs to have at least five to seven or nine years of industry experience so that they have they they have um, life solutions to the life projects and uh, that is something that they place great importance on another very important thing is that it's a great platform for international exposure uh, as students you might see that a lot of your faculty or probably your parents or uncles of course before corona you would see them traveling to different conferences or to different meetings and you know why do they do that it is of course to meet the colleagues but also to to expand and to connect to whatever they are doing so in today's times wherever each person is they still are there are still avenues for growth including um, including uh, ambani too right he made such big progress during the lockdown and when you are in germany you are meeting students from all parts of the world i mean to your left could be somebody sitting from america to your right could be somebody sitting from brazil so you know you're not meeting somebody for one hour or two hours it is for a solid two years and that gives you access to their culture the way they learn the subjects that you both are studying at the masters level and it is networking with the world markets tomorrow even if you start to do a small start a business of a small screw that is required in one of the mecha mechanics of a car or a flight or something you have connections to so many countries of the world that you have built during your education years english is the medium of instruction to study in germany i repeat we are only suggesting and promoting english taught programs english medium programs so even in today's times there are a lot of people who come up to me and say but to study in germany you have to learn german they are right but that information is from 1991 yes so it's 30 years back what happened 30 years back 30 years back in 91 there was something called as the bologna process that was the internationalization of higher education that is when everything happened in english and that's when they started inviting the international students so yes i repeat the programs are in english and the work space is also in english but if you are interested in a german girlfriend or a boyfriend then for personal reasons you need different levels of german language right and when you club all of this together it's it's a wonderful experience of a lifetime that you will be um, encountering because you'll be physically there this is the map of germany and um, you see that it's connected to the most uh, most wonderful countries of the world so over the weekend just the way you take a train uh, from coimbatore uh, to chennai you can take a train from germany and you can spend the weekend in zurich in switzerland or in rome or in uh, utrecht in the netherlands and so on so what i'm trying to say is that you will have a visa to travel to all of these countries and it is an easy access to um it's an easy access to all the european countries 28 countries now as engineers or from students uh, from various fields that you're from you all strive for excellence and something that is very very important for you is that whatever you do in your own field it has to be an invention that becomes a household name so invention kept in a showcase in a glass showcase means nothing but if that invention has reached every household that calls for itself the success of it some of the ground breaking inventions from germany was i woke up today morning it's still my morning and i brushed my teeth the toothpaste that i used is a german invention the car that you all drive in is a german invention the aspirin that you take is a german invention and there are so many inventions that have become household names why is that so much possible it's also possible because there are so many nobel laureates you would see that there are nobel laureates not just from the field of mechanical or um 
from the engineering field, but from various fields of economics, literature, of course, engineering as well. And there are more than 109 German, German uh, Nobel laureates. How many of them are from India? Question mark. I've worked very closely with the various IITs. In fact, IIT Madras has been started with uh, German funding. IIT Bombay was started with Russian funding and so on. This was in the 60s and prior to that. Um, and in spite of having so much of funding, we don't see that kind of results. Yeah. So the talent is everywhere and we want you to utilize your talent and grow. Education clubbed with the right kind of jobs. Industry is extremely important, the backing of the industry to education. Germany is also an industrial giant. And this is very important for me to share this with you because these things go hand in hand. I have listed a list of companies like Volkswagen to Bosch and so many others, which are hiring international students in a very big number. So it's not a small number like one or two or five, but in a very big number. And whatever, whatever expertise field that company is in, they still require your expertise. For example, even like a face cream company will still need an IT guy. It will still need a finance guy, a strategist. Uh, it will still need an, uh, so many engineers to work on their various machinery which produce those kind of things. The reason why I'm saying this is that any field, don't just look at it blindly that, hey, it's Volkswagen or it's Bosch and I'm an IT guy. They require you and they require all of the fields that you guys are coming from. So this is just a snapshot to for you to understand that there are so many companies um, in Germany that are hiring international students. Now that you've got so bucked up about all studying in Germany, let us understand the facts and figures. I have promised your principal, sir, that I will be giving 360 degree information. So here it is. There are 427 institutions in Germany spanning over 22,000 programs. We all love variety. We love variety in our food. We love variety in our clothes and we love variety of all kinds. So also in the field of education, and this is something that uh, Germany is a pioneer in. And now your Shalini ma'am had told me that your, the students are very, very smart. Will somebody tell me how much is um, 1 billion and how many zeros does it have? And then how much is 100 billion? and multiply those 100 billion euros into Indian rupees. And if somebody can tell me how much is 100 billion euros in Indian rupees, it's a very big amount. The reason why I'm asking that, your, your, probably your calculator might explode. The thing is that this is the kind of funding, whether it's 100 billion euros or 27 or 530 million, uh, coming from different kind of purses, but for it's for one single purpose, which is to promote the various projects happening at the universities and to promote the quality of education that the students will be studying at. This is something very, very important to know that this is done without any political um, criteria of any or anything of that kind. Uh, just two days back, I read in the news that one of the Indian universities, a very prestigious university, uh, Anna University, and the uh, prince, uh, the vice chancellor, sir, uh, M. K. Surapaji, uh, we know him personally, and he, it's a very, very eminent university, and I think you have a, uh, you're affiliated to Anna University, right? He wanted to take Anna University for uh, to make it as a center of eminence and excellence to bag thousand crores from the central government. And it's a very unfortunate thing that he's got a death threat. And I think that's very, very sad uh, that, you know, some wrong kind of people even stop or or find hindrances in the path of education. Um, we are promoters of education. We are promoters of progress. Now, this in Germany is very uh, happily done if, if a university or if an institution wants to grow and if they want to progress, 
the center and the state government is very, very happy to promote and support them in every which way. The various German universities, <coughs> sorry, the various German universities that top the international charts, this and so much more. Um, I would also explain to you about the German university system. The good news is that I'm not just promoting one, two or three universities. I'm going to speak about um, the whole university system and everything that entails. So you get a complete picture of what's happening. In the German education system, the, the diversion or bif bifurcation of what kind of fields you choose from starts at a very, very younger level, like at the school level. So the schools are itself of a different nature, like you will have a gymnasium or a Berufschule or a Realschule and things like that. Now, um, so at a very younger age, the child decides whether he or she wishes to become a musician or an artist or an engineer. And thus, there is a focus of education right from the school level itself. And then it stems up at the bachelor's and then the master's level. And there are prestigious degrees like the magister and the diploma. Please do not misunderstand the Indian diploma for the diploma from Germany. Diploma is the very prestigious master's degree that is awarded from Germany. All of that information that we saw, you know, that they are giving free to affordable education, the German universities, the German universities have got so much funding and all of that is there. However, the education system uh, to get in there is a little complicated and I'm here to simplify it. So um, and simplifying it further, there are three kinds of uh, universities or institutions of higher education, as they call it. The first are the traditional university. Now, what does a traditional university mean? It means that the focus of this university uh, is more on the research, irrespective of whichever field you wish to study and join. So I repeat, the focus is research and if not now immediately, but any time in the future, you wish to do a PhD, it would be great if you can join a traditional university. The degrees are internationally recognized. This is something very important. The second kind of universities are the universities of applied sciences. These are two, close to 250 in number universities and courses will be in thousands. But this is the universities are close to 250 and a great deal of importance is put on practical training of whatever you study in the classrooms. So whatever you've studied, there is a bigger element of internship, which is part of this program. So internships at universities of applied sciences can range anywhere from two months to even six months or eight long months. This is a very good uh, idea for students or for engineers who love to roll up their sleeves and want to implement whatever they have studied. Here, you cannot go ahead and do a PhD because this is more practical oriented. Now I will introduce the other concept is, there are students who will ask me, so what is good? the traditional or a university of applied sciences. Well, even before you ask me, let me tell this to you that it completely depends on you. There's nothing like good and bad at the German university level. It completely depends on what you wish to study and they will help uh, support you and promote you in that. Now, it's important to know the grading system because now I've started to think that I want to go there but what grades do I have and what will be acceptable and things like that. As Indians, we always think more the better, not for Germany. The Germany GPA system works from one to four, one being the best and four being the least. Okay, so the more closer you are to one, the better it is. And then it slides down. Um, German universities also support 
barrier free education not just for accessibility or easy accommodation of the students but also rearranging the study program and making specific academic adjustments and i think that's such a wonderful idea to respect everyone to support everyone and uh, to ensure that education should not be a barrier in their lives and of course to avoid the misuse they require correct documentations and this is also true for hardship applications now all of this information that i'm presenting my friends mind you it is not available on the internet um so this is very very special and i'm glad you're listening uh, you are here on this webinar listening to it another question that students always have is what are the parameters to select a good university probably where there are more indian students or probably where um some of the ways uh, to define a good university is the quality of professors the library facilities and do you know there is a secret question that is asked to the professors and the secret question is that if you had a son or a daughter a child of your own would you want to put him or her in this university if the answer is yes then this is a good university because if that professor's child is important so are the children of every other uh, families right and i think that is such uh, such a beautiful moralistic way of uh, judging uh, the university uh, quality the we german universities uh take pride in themselves some of them will say hey we have 13 nobel laureates that sit in our campus and some others will say hey we have 65 lakh books in our library and some university might say hey we have more than 42000 students over 250 programs uh, that's a, that's a very big number now you must be wondering why would nobel laureates be sitting at the university the the thing is that all of the work that the nobel laureates do towards gaining that no, nobel laureate ship is done not in some dingy far away room but at the german universities and they are part of the premises they are part of the campus the good news to all the students and the faculty is that they have easy access to those nobel laureates and just imagine as a student being a pre final year final year student and you've just started your masters now imagine you go and meet this nobel laureate even getting like five minutes with him and getting inputs on your project will chart out a beautiful path for yourself and that is possible in germany and there is an easy access to that and i think that is such a boost to research and education now i am going to highlight a little bit on the masters program in in the in the format of its credit points everything is ects the credit point system in germany so for the masters level there are 120 credit points which means 60 credit points are for um first year 60 for the second year as a student we are always thinking of the tricks and the tips to find um ways to score more marks what about here in germany do you know you uh, you know um as students your mind works faster than your hand so just imagine your final dissertation your thesis instead of writing down the whole thesis if you had an opportunity to speak about it how wonderful would that be to the esteemed academic jury and this is something that you get in germany that you will give, you'll be given an opportunity to speak in front of the very prestigious professors academic jury and present your case and that that ensures that you get the highest number of marks and 120 credit points is highly respected world over there are a lot of countries will say oh we finish a masters in a year or so then you get only 60 credit points and it's not that regarded um when you have to go for a good job and now i'm going to speak um, a little bit about phd programs because most of you are students here but just for you to get an idea about phd so just the way there are so many options at the masters level there are also various options at the phd level 
What are the various options? Let us see. The first and foremost are the individual PhD programs that um, people can go ahead and do. It's the same like, you know, you have to be registered at the university under a particular professor. And depending on his or her gender, he or she becomes your doctor father or your doctor mother. And uh, there is no time limit to this. You can do your PhD. On an average, it takes about three to five years, more closer to four to five years. This is the traditional method happening worldwide and also in Germany. The second method is the structured PhD programs. Mind you, you will not find this on the internet. I am sharing this with you. What is a structured PhD program? It means a group of three to four budding researchers come together to work on one single project. And these projects are time defined, which means everybody has to be on the same speed, so as to say, to work on that project. And it's about three to three and a half years. So it's like one car and all the tires have to be the same. You cannot have a bicycle tire and a BMW or a truck tire in an Audi car or so on. And you can also earn money in the name of stipend under the structured PhD program. How much can you earn? You can earn up to quarter to three lakh of rupees per month. And there are 600 such programs available in Germany. Now comes the a very exciting way to do a PhD in Germany. For this, you should have done your master's in Germany. That is a mandate. That's one. The second is after finishing your master's, you go ahead and, uh, you know, you have got a job, you're getting a salary, like a normal job at an industry. But you've maintained um, contacts with your professor. Professors are regarded great in Germany. It's very respectable uh, position. You always call a professor. You always address them as professor, doctor, so and so, and not the way it's done here, you know. Um, but professors are considered very, very important. And if you maintain contacts with your professor and if he or she agrees to mentor your project that you're working right now at the company and allows you to register that as a PhD thesis, you could be working in the industry, getting a salary, but then with the blessings of your professor, you can also see there are so many wonderful programs um, in Germany. Of course, mechanical is there, automobile is there, aeronautics is there, but there's also something for industry 4.0 subjects or for metallurgy or for wine business or sports sciences or English or environment process engineering or applied biology or agriculture. And there is so much more logistics, supply chain. And that way, uh, there is dedicated efforts done for each field at each level. What I'm going to do now is I am going to highlight the specifics of each of the field, the kind of unique subjects that each of the field has. So the, all the traditional aspects of those fields are already there. I will not be speaking about them, but some very unique programs that I will be that are there in each field I will be speaking about because today we are addressing an audience of more than 570 close to 600 students and there are students from all streams and all fields. So it's very important to know what lies in store for you, especially for you. So engineering, all the traditional fields are already there, but over and above, you could also study a master's in cartography, very unique fields like geodesy or geoinformatics or metallic materials technology or space engineering or aeronautical and space applications. And I think that's very interesting because then you're focusing on just the transfer fluid materials in space applications. Or you could study blended fields like media informatics. Or you could study advanced signal processing. Or analytical instruments. Or automation and IT. And within engineering, again, I'm repeating all the traditional fields are already there. But some very unique new age fields like digital engineering. 
or power engineering water engineering did you know water is going to be the next biggest war the world is going to see water is very scarce and uh, you know if you would have studied that subject water engineering you will be the sought after person that people will come running um, after you or power engineering uh, india is rich in power uh, all kinds of power solar power and things like that so you could specialize in that and become an expert in that and people will come running up to you network production engineering or railway systems engineering railways are are you know they are the heartbeats of any economy including india but also for germany some of the trains that run at 3 or 400 um, kilometers an hour beautiful train fast trains and with carpets inside the trains and so on and if you become an expert in that coming back home or staying there also you will have so many opportunities or road traffic engineering you never knew these kind of subjects even existed and when we don't know what exists we never know that we are inclined towards it mining engineering usability engineering solar engineering and so much more that is available within the general fields of engineering now let's focus each of the field computer sciences computer sciences yes you can do computer science by itself but you can also go ahead and study computational math and that's a blended field and if you're an expert or exponent in math you could you know you could be doing something like this or molecular and computational biology or computational methods in engineering or a very very new innovative field is human computer interaction and that's going to be the 22nd or the 23rd century fields nobody is looking at it right now and there is so much opportunity and you will be the pioneer doing that so there is so much available in human computer interaction humanoid robotics and all of those applied fields so all the general fields are already there but over and above you also have that including information technology information technology you could be a specialist in it as well as communications technology or media technology or masters in media management and digital technologies or a blend of electrical engineering and it and i think that is so very interesting because um, you get uh, you get to study super special see you all are specialists right now you all are studying towards a specialization what you'll be studying is a super specialization and each of your field has plethora of options so all of this is possible now comes the industry 4.0 fields these are the latest fields that the world is gearing towards and um, these fields have also seen a great deal of boom they are a step higher to the uh, mechanical engineering streams that one normally looks at but not the traditional subjects let's have a look what they have you can study a whole masters program in robotic systems or you can study a whole masters program in mechatronics and robotics or autonomous systems um you can study sustainable technology management or you can study robotics for a particular field like construction i am introducing a brand new field called bionics bionics has still not entered india but it has touched the shore of the western countries bionics is a blend we have a student she is going to be applying for bionics she didn't want to be an engineer nor a doctor she wanted a blend of the two and so you can come from the sciences background and still study bionics and i think that's such a great advantage uh, and your 12 plus 3 years of education is respected in germany let us understand now on the other uh, it has 3 4.0 like artificial intelligence artificial intelligence is the new talk of the town i mean everything is ai um, right now during lockdown we saw a forward video of pani puri uh, being sold with ai mechanism or business intelligence and process management or machine learning or cognitive systems and so on what i'm trying to say my friends is that each of the field that you are interested in will have so so much uh, options plethora of options for you to choose from so sometimes what you see as a subject will be an entire field to study from 
data sciences. Data sciences is coming up in a very, very big way. So various options in data sciences like applied math and data sciences or computer science that focus on big data. So big data is very different from data science. But yes, you can have focus on big data and AI, artificial intelligence, or data analytics and decision sciences, and so on. So my friends, I'm, I'm so happy that we are able to share the options over and above what the normal options already exist. Automobile engineering, design and development in automotive and mechanical engineering, management and engineering in CAD CAM, or automotive um, robotic systems engineering, or plastics engineering blended with mechanical engineering. Who knew that existed? And I was always interested in that. But once we know that this is existing, we are even interested to take it further. Now I'm going to also highlight on the other fields um, and the highlight uh, topics that you can study as a full-fledged master's program like instructional engineering you can study structural and civil with risk management of the facilities or understanding the wood technology or construction and the real estate management or natural hazards i mean world overseas a lot of floods um, earthquakes and so on and one when there is there the biggest losses that happen is on the structures the existing structures whether they're commercial residential or whatever so if you're an expert in that you could be the sought after person when such a, such a problem arises and that's where the opportunities are Subject like protein chemistry, which is just a subject that you would have studied in chemical engineering, would be an entire master's program um, or chemical and bioprocess engineering or something like uh, biomedicine and bioengineering or microbiology and biochemistry. Material sciences and nanosciences. Material sciences is the base of so many things from the aircraft, from the stuff, you know, what gets inside the material of the aircraft to make it as light as possible, or the material that gets inside the vaccine of the corona that they are going to find now so that it becomes fast soluble inside the body and so much more. So material science is one underlining field that has various applications. Uh, within that field, you could be studying, of course, traditional the material sciences and nanosciences, but also advanced materials and engineering. Or you could be studying material science and simulation or polymer material sciences or energy application for large scale facilities. There are so many small, medium, and big companies in and around Coimbatore, um, in Tamil Nadu, and towards the Karnataka. And these are really large manufacturing units, uh, which work either in jute or there are so many applications. You could be the specialist in the energy application for those kind of facilities, or you could be studying the mineralogy part of it or nanosciences or computational mechanics and materials and structures. It's the COMAS program that's very, very famous. And one of our students um, is there in that particular program. So various options in various fields. And now comes a new boom field, engineering management or technical management. Now, what does that mean? You will not believe that um, in the Western countries, they are having a dearth of engineers who are willing to be the managers. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? So there are these various thousands of engineering companies and they, of course, being an engineering company, they're working on engineering projects and they have engineers who work on these engineering projects in the engineering company, but they need a manager to oversee all of that. And that is where you come into picture. So if you're an engineer with an inclination towards management, you could be uh, you know, overlooking a bunch of engineers or looking at the India desk of that German company uh, where they want to start up or do something really big. So technical management is gaining great grounds and you could be specializing in technology and innovation management or just product uh, project management or collection management and biodiversity. 
or international business and engineering or double masters in uh, MBA as well as masters in sciences. And I think these are some of the very interesting fields that the world uh, needs today and world needs such people. Coming from the fields of uh, management, there are other fields also uh, like small uh, enterprise and promotion training. When I see small pro enterprise promotion training, so a big part of my work is also to host uh, delegations that come from Germany and Europe. And many times it's like the mayor, which is a political delegation, and he will be joined by a very big business delegation. And when you interact with that business delegation, you know what they tell you? Hey, I am a small business. And it would surprise me. Why is he calling himself a small business? And I will share the revelation that I got. Small and medium means anywhere from 50 rupees to 500 crore rupees in Indian terms. That huge. And they still call themselves small and medium enterprise. And my friends in today's world, small and medium enterprises constitute about 90% of the economy. Yes, and I'm not kidding now, not just for India, but for Germany, America, any part of the world. And this is something very, very important. So if you would have studied small and medium enterprise and training, you are the sort of the person or a specialist in technology and innovation management. You are the innovator. You're finding new things or leadership in international organization or labor policies with so many with hundreds of people working in these small to medium enterprise companies. Of course, they need a, a, a guy who would look and iron out all of those issues, right? Uh, other fields like global management or energy management or marketing intelligence or engineers get into medical devices and the healthcare management. And now you see that healthcare is one of the basic field and whatever, whatever we are, but you know, whether I was a musician or an artist or a teacher, I was sitting at home and the lockdown happened, right? So we, so health is important for everybody, irrespective of what we are as professions, professionals. So healthcare management already has taken a boom and is going to take up a bigger boom in the coming years. Um, so that is a very important logistics and supply chain management or business innovation and business creation, international management of resources, and so much more. Uh, you could be studying entrepreneurship, you could be studying technology, innovation, marketing and entrepreneurship, or you could be studying developing and emerging markets. India is an emerging market. So you could be a specialist from India working for a completely different, uh, from a completely different country altogether. And that could be your forte. Sports sciences. Uh, gone are the days when we wait for an injury to happen and then go to a physiotherapist. Now is the time of protection, self-protection. We are all masking or we are all maintaining our distances from time to time. And uh, th what does that mean? That means that prevention is better than cure. And all of these sports people, whether it's cricket or hockey, or soccer, football, whatever field, but they need specialists who would have studied performance um, engineering or health and performance or technology in sports uh, or physical activities and things like that. So you are the sort of the people whom they would really want to have. And then, of course, there are various options also in the fields of arts and commerce, like human rights or um, philosophy or crisis management in psychology and English literature too, including math. Math, you can study mathematical physics or actual um, and financial mathematics or data sciences or quantitative finance. And studying actual sciences, I mean, India is just 3% tapped in actual sciences. There was 97% still more opportunity for you to study and progress in or in physics, uh, wherein you're studying applied physics and engineering physics or climate physics, quantum physics, physics of functional materials. There's so much of options available in whatever field you choose yourself for, including biology and biotechnology and pharmacy. So pharmaceutical biotechnology or biological resources 
और फार्मेसी फार्मको इकोनॉमिक्स इंडस्ट्रियल फार्मेसी फार्मास्यूटिकल बायोटेक्नोलॉजी और बायोमेडिकल साइंसेस फूड टेक्नोलॉजी यस इंजीनियर्स आर गेटिंग इन टू फूड टेक्नोलॉजी टू अंडरस्टैंड द वेरियस मैकेनिजम्स एंड फूड बिजनेस इज लाइक बूमिंग लाइक नो ब्रीज बिजनेस यू सी द नंबर ऑफ रेस्टोरेंट्स दैट हैव कम अप इन um in your area five years back where there are so many restaurants no look at now so food business is really really growing in a very big way and so is textiles you could be a specialist in merge technology for resource efficiency uh, and so much more so each of the field has various options including renewables india is rich with its sunlight the sun and the wind and uh, you could you know and renewable renewable energy is it's where the world is looking at now you could be a specialist in renewable energy systems or renewable energy or sustainable resource management or an mba in renewables after coming from engineering background or whatever background that you've come from why is that interesting because there is there is great potential and there's opportunity and you will be the bridging factor towards it as an engineer you understand the uh, the pv in the solar panels and the various kinds of panels or the lightweight panels that are now coming in or the windmills for the wind technology and so on and there are so many options within that same field that is possible including petrochem too but also energy and environment two of our students have now um, they are mechanical engineering students um they are from your region and they see a great potential in waste management so they have registered with us to study environmental process engineering because they want to start a business in the waste management part of it what is waste management it could be industrial waste it could be um bio waste it could be solid waste air waste all kinds of waste and hygiene because hygiene is taking up such a big uh, dominance of predominance these are the kinds of fields that will have a big boom and nobody would want to compromise on that so this is these are the kind of options that uh, they are looking at coming from the mechanical engineering um, background and there are various fields even in architecture which i'm not dwelling in but just so that uh, to let you know for your neighbor or for your cousin that this is possible so all fields under the sun is possible and now i'm going to highlight so you would have seen that i am not promoting any a or b university the reason be i am um i work in a very moral moral manner and i believe that um, it's not good idea to take commissions from universities to send students there i do not do that here i'm here your professors and your principal has invited me for your good and for your benefit so i'm giving you all the plethora of options open very open honest and transparent in front of you and i'm also trying to share with you the kind of university highlights that we look for our own students so first is the we look out for universities which have the initiative of excellence titan or universities which have great internship opportunities in leading organizations or universities which offer life projects to work on so life projects or hands on experience or um, for their students the other kind of universities that we appreciate sharing for our university are universities which have international collaborations whether it's american company american universities or asian universities but also universities which are amongst the top 5% of the world or who are uh, being committed a great amount of funding for the near future this expands their um, projects the, these expands their lab facilities and so much more and the interface uh, uh, for the students to get so much guidance from their esteemed professor is also enriched now we've understood all the subject specializations of various fields now let us go a step deeper the i'm i'm now sharing or highlighting on a very important topic called decentralization so what do we have in india uh, in india what we have is centralization what is centralization um, to give you an example 
if as an engineer if somebody got into iit then he will start thinking oh i've got into iit what are the options now of getting into kharagpur instead of iit um roorkee or or things like that and then if he doesn't get into iit he will think of nit so there is first best second best and then so on so forth so there is always these kind of options available okay um there will be time enough given for questions my humble request is to stop posting these questions and focus on the presentation i've taken uh, great efforts to bring all of this together for you and uh, all of your questions will be answered but if you don't listen to this correctly you will be repeating your questions even if you are a professor you are just repeating your questions without even listening correctly to this so uh, my humble request is to um that you will get your time for question answer session but focus on what i'm speaking okay thank you um i am explaining the concept of centralization and decentralization so what is available in india is centralization which means there is first best second best third best so you are always looking at if you didn't get in here you are looking at the second best and then the third best in germany what is there is um In Germany, what we have is can everybody mute their uh, can everybody mute yourself because your background is serving the students here. Uh, Dr. Shalini, can I can you please request everybody to mute themselves? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I'm I'm muting the uh, person who have unmuted themselves. Yes, thank you. Um, in germany what we have is the concept of decentralization which means there is not the first and the second best but in equal another chance to apply at another university this is something very important as a great advantage to the student so this means that if you didn't get in one best university there is always a second best equal chance available for you that's a great great advantage for you so it, this means that not just students from iit students who are very institutions and the university can apply
Ma'am, I think some audibility trouble. Ma'am, I think she have left, ma'am. No, no, she is inside, sir. No, ma'am, she have left, ma'am. Oh. Only her presentation uh, mode is on, ma'am. Oh, I'll check with her. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Uh, dear participant, there is some connectivity trouble. Ma'am is uh, reconnecting, trying to reconnect. She'll be handling session for another 10 minutes. Kindly try to uh, be in there. Thank you, sir. Okay, sir. Ma'am? Participants feedback link will be posted only after the session. So kindly wait. Um, dear participants, Madam has told that uh, she has another important uh, information to share with us. Kindly uh, be patient and uh, be with us for another 10 minutes. She's trying to uh, reconnect.
Ma'am has asked for another another minute so that she'll be joining. Uh, kindly apologize us and please be uh, patient with us. Ma'am, unmute yourself, ma'am. Ma'am, kindly unmute yourself. Okay. Hello, friends. Bade bade desho mein choti choti baate hoti rehti hai. So this is something that happened, and I'm back. Uh, we did the concepts of decentralization, the test, and now we go to a very very interesting topic, which is living expenses. How much does it cost for you to live there? German precision, German perfection says 853 euros a month. And I have given a breakup. You can see my screen which says rent, so much, food, clothing, 
insurance, watching the famous movie or wearing torn jeans. So all of this cost will come to 853 on the upper limit, absolute upper limit. Indian students can live much, much beneath this, less than half of it. But this is what the government thinks that you will require. And now comes a very important topic about visa. Visa is a big scare because for so many countries you can get admissions, but you don't get the visa. And uh, with, with Germany, if you're not an international threat, your visa will not be an issue. So let us understand what you need is a valid passport. And of course, your letter of admission. And the most important thing is that they respect you and your privacy and they will not ask to see how much land your family has and how much jewelry your mom has. Uh, only they need to see that you have uh, money enough to support yourself when you're living there. So this is called cost of living. 853 multiplied by 12 is 10,236 euros. This is your money for you to use when you're in Germany. If the expenses is less than half, you save the rest of the money. So this is all that is required. And even though you've not asked me, let me tell you just the way there is a green card for America, there is blue card for Germany, and that is possible. Can you work part time? Yes, and you are even allowed to receive money. So there are a lot of countries within the EU where you cannot get money. You can work, you are allowed to work, but you they cannot pay you. But in Germany, you are allowed to work and you can also receive money. How much can you work? You can work for up to 240 half working days. How much is 240 half working days? Is close to eight months a year. So that's a very long time to be allowed to work. And how much can you earn? You can earn anywhere from 5 lakh of rupees up to 11 lakh of rupees a year. And all of this income will be tax-free income. Imagine there are 60% taxes in Germany. All of that is tax-free income. So this is a great deal that you get an opportunity to study, but at the same time work and make a good amount of money. How many students get 11 lakh as a pay package in the first year itself? Not many because that's not the realistic scenario, but this is possible in Germany. And now um, I would like to highlight that, you know, I, I'm also somebody's daughter and I come from a very protective family. My uncle will even call up if I get down out of the train, you know, that have you uh, boarded, have you got down, you know, and things like that. So just the way I am somebody's daughter or niece, I respect you all and I respect the, the protection that your family has for you and therefore I brought this up that Indian students are very respected in Germany and these are the campaign logos of not, not just one university but so many universities where you see at least one Indian uh, there, you know, so Indian, Indian, Indian and that means that Indians are respected not just at the university level but also in workplace. The DAD Germany, which has a presence in 173 countries, the global head is an Indian. The German giant Thyssen Group, which makes elevators. In India, they are known as Uda. And uh, the global head is an Indian now. So I think it's a great uh, advantage, plethora of advantages for you. And now uh, you must be wondering or you have this curiosity as to how we can help you. When I used to work for the government, we used to do a lot of things, you know, but when it comes to the student part of it, we were trained to just give one web link and that was about it. And the students were supposed to break down everything on their own and then be in Germany. Things don't work like that. This is such a complicated process and everything needs to be rightly guided. And as uh, your professor, senior professor was mentioning that some in the earlier times, it took so many months or probably close to a year just to get everything together. So we have uh, what we focus on is customized guidance. And we are the only ones in the whole of India that is giving this detailed customized guidance. Even if you look at the presentation, it was so detailed and so well enumerated. And now once that student, you know, you have gone through this webinar and then you have personal questions for your own particular case. 
you will write us an email with your set of questions and even we can do a personal counseling session after a free uh, evaluation of your academic case and after all of that and you've registered with us the way we will work for you is six phase manner the first phase is we want to know everything what you have done and what you wish doing what are your career aims and goals that sometimes students come and say that i want to become a millionaire billionaire some students have that they want to settle there and all kinds of different things so and what is your career aim what fields do you want to study in so everything is catered to in the phase 1 research questionnaire then based on the inputs that you've given us we make a fresh customized research for you so out of all the 22000 programs we only share with you the best and the most relevant programs for you in an excel sheet so the university the name of the program the medium of instruction the highlights of that program and everything is added um into that excel sheet and even before we send you that excel sheet we do something called as the horoscope check of the university you know horoscopes yes for people but for the university it's very important to understand two three things first is these degrees should be internationally recognized degrees and not fly by night or anything we need to double check the the quality of the institution that it is a a plus and nothing less than that uh so that you know you will be the proud flag bearers of nehru group of institutions and when you go there it's your you are your precious child of your parents of your family so that they don't get worried we take care of all of these things in greater detail and then phase 3 shortlisting you do the shortlist of these are the 20 universities that i wish to apply to and we will not tell you that you only apply here or there uh, we work for your benefit for your focus come now comes the very 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 important phase which is the document preparation you see you have seen that universities offer so much affordable education which is also high quality education you see that the visa is also so easy and hassle free um many times universities offer complimentary german language program and so much is offered from the german side what is it um that they want from you it's very very um advantages for the student but you have to understand one thing that it is supremely competitive you think you have all the documents ready and then you send and then you got rejects why did you get a reject for various reasons because your documents were not qualitatively high i mean yes they will say we have we need a resume and you will send a resume and you will send an lor and so on so forth but that quality was missing so for this uh, document preparation we have a whole editorial team that sits in germany to work on your documentation now each realization each of the university needs about 4 to 5 documentation each so if you're applying to 20 universities so let's say so 20 into 500 we make 100 custom documents for you even a thing like letter of recommendation you know your professors are so nice and when you go to them they will say yes we'll sign for you just go and get the draft what you do when you have to do a draft you go to somebody called as google baba and you think you're the only one who knows google baba and all of that copy paste jobs goes in dustbin my friend or you take something from your best friend you just change the names things here and there and all of that when it goes to the german um, university it goes in dustbin so we custom prepare the letters of recommendation keeping in mind the achievements the great valuable achievements of your professors and highlighting them into your um, lor um, through their mode of teaching even statement of purpose why you want to study in that university for that course we find out who the professors are what are their pet projects and how um, you know how they will find you more interesting having you in the course so everything what we do is from the german perspective and we get into the great details of the university and the german the german university and the german professors and we shape everything that as per what they want and this is done uh, by international experts only and when all of this so much dedicated efforts are taken for you this is the success mantra and uh, we have got 100% track record so far so at least one or two or three you get letters of admission then we 
even tell you what was the pros and cons whether you should select this university or that because you have to be married to one university to apply for your visa so um then the best one uh, we select for you and then you go ahead and then we even groom you for the visa interview because you cannot be applying there's nothing happening in Coimbatore the closest uh, that you're connected is Chennai so we will even groom you for the visa interview and last but not the least we will groom you for the intercultural training what is intercultural training which means that when you go to Germany you should feel at comfort and even if your mother is asking shall i send an idli maker we will answer to questions like that or how many pair of clothes can we send or things like that uh, can a vegetarian survive there or various things possible so all of those things also we will cater to at that phase so from a until z we will hand hold you and we will guide you through and in nutshell if i have to tell you what we do you know this anybody has a pet mouse what madam we have pet a dog or a cat but even if there is a mouse in the road we walk from the other side of the road right and now imagine if this guy comes to your campus or in your neighborhood everybody will be clamoring to have a picture with him who is he mickey mouse and this person is not just a mouse he's a trillion dollar industry there are mickey mouse t-shirts mickey mouse water bottles mickey mouse underwear mickey mouse everything what's the difference when the ingredient is the same the difference is that this is person with somebody with a begging bowl that i want this and this is somebody with a commanding position and this is what we do we transform normal personas into personas into commanding position and i think that's the great uh, difference we take great pride in the quality of our work that we do and now i'm going to share with you as we come towards the end of the program i'm going to share with you the testimony of a gentleman who, uh, he and his wife have studied in uh, germany and he's called the solar guru of india let us hear from him what he has to say hello friends this is krishna i'm back present in usa in denmark with the uh, nikita devia shot uh, a group or company and mentor and i'm very pleased to see that she is actually doing what i have been trying to do on a personal basis but on the professional level as you all know i studied in germany and i am whatever i am because of the chance i got to go to germany and it was in germany that i realized that i was an indian while in india i was looking at the west for all the solutions and was thinking the west is the best But going to Germany opened my eyes to the value system of India, the opportunities, the culture, the language, the food, and how scientific it was. And I became an Indian while I was in Germany. Also, while in Germany, or doing introspection, and what made me such a good student, and I was just an average student in India, I realized through the education system there, which was uh, making you think, not just learn by heart, which was making you do a hands-on approach. Uh, which uh, sort of made me a good engineer, and as you all know, it's a, that is healthy to become a good entrepreneur, a good engineer, a good technocrat. You could come up with lot of solutions, and also not just I became entrepreneur, but also social entrepreneur. So whenever I get opportunity, I will tell people to go to Germany or even any other part of the world. But make Germany the best. I say Germany because Germany has two advantages. One, the education in Germany at that time was, and even now, to a large extent, is free. In Germany. Uh, education uh, is more hands-on. So I was very glad when I again today I was sitting with uh, Nikita and heard about what she's doing. Uh, Nikita, she of course introduced herself. Uh, uh, was working for DAAD, a German exchange program, which would guide people to go to Germany for education. I was able to uh, Nikita to tell us about the project. Please listen to her, require reach out to her, talk to her, and of course I'm always available to help you guide. You. All the best. Bye. Thank you. And now I have a testimonial of another gentleman uh, from the younger age group. Uh, this uh, gentleman did his production engineering and then mechanical engineering, and he stood first in the university. So he got a direct invitation from IIT uh, to join the IIT, but he rejected the IIT to join IISC Bangalore. And from there, he got selected for the Nehru Cambridge Scholarships, where three lakh engineers apply, and only one gets selected. He rejected even that because he was joining a Nobel laureate at Cornell in uh, U.S. 
And from there, he went to Germany for his very, very prestigious postdoc fellowships in Germany. The most prestigious scholarships, the father of all scholarships, are the Max Planck fellowships that stem from Germany. So having studied and worked in India, America, and Germany, let us hear his experience of what he has to say. Ma'am, his volume is very low. His vo we are unable to hear. Okay, I will. I will. Um, yeah. What he's trying to say is that um, the research institutions in Germany have a very strong uh, network of staff, and the project and the ambience that they provide. So it is very easy for you to publish your work in the prestigious journals, and that has helped him. And he also met a lot of my students when he was in Germany, uh, in Stuttgart and in various other cities. So this is what he's mentioning is the gist of what he's trying to say. So having worked in three countries, the three best countries of the world, India, America and Germany, he thinks that Germany has added a great deal to his success. So this was these were the two testimonials. And now a little glimpse of the various students um, um, that we have, and they come from all fields and all backgrounds, including engineering, mechanical engineering, car design, pharmacy, IT, uh, peace and conflict studies, PV safety scientists, pharmacovigilance. She goes for small and medium uh, enterprise training. Um, this girl is uh, working in the field of hygiene. This guy is in literature. This guy from mechanical engineering wanted a part of coding. So we have given him computational engineering. And we're particularly proud of this boy, uh, Parin. He wanted to actually go for America. And uh, he was getting admissions in a C plus grade university. Um, he was getting admission uh, for about 80, 90 lakh of rupees. But his visas were getting rejected. So three times that happened. So when he came to me, he was in, crack, in a state of where, you know, he was in state of tears. And uh, he promptly registered and then in six to eight months, we were able to place him in one of the finest university in Germany with one semester in Harvard. And all of that with 100% scholarship. So what really happens is that we are able to, to fulfill the dreams of all the students because we focus on customized guidance. Today, he's a, he's a well-established um, corporate person traveling the world. And this gentleman, a very shy guy, Deepak, if there are 1,000 students sitting in one room, you will not even see or feel his presence. But he was very passionate uh, to grow uh, and develop in the field of research. And he joined for his master's program uh, to Freiburg with, a, with a, a partnership with an Argentinian university, with a German university. He's finished his master's, and now we got him enrolled for a PhD program. And last week, a girl approached him who would otherwise not even look at him. So there are a lot of um, advantages. They've got engaged, soon to be married. So personal advantages also to studying in Germany. And before the times of Corona, when I used to feel safe visiting the institution, the various institutions that would invite me all the way from uh, Ahmedabad, uh, PDPU in Ahmedabad to KIIT, uh, it's an institution of excellence in Bhubaneswar, various uh, communities that would invite me, 
uh, various minority communities or a girls college in Chennai that has invited me and a, a very beautiful interaction that I had in Coimbatore was at NCT, the Mahalingam College of Engineering and Technology and with the decision makers and of the KCT in Coimbatore. Um, KCT is a very beautiful institution. Um, so I have a personal interaction of people from Coimbatore and various business organizations that have invited me, like FIKI. Some institutions have also appointed me as their advisors. And uh, some institutions like St. Joseph and Mangalore uh, have tied up an MOU with us that helps give extra advantages to the students of their students itself. And most importantly, these students who are the flag bearers, when they go to Germany, they are your flag bearers. Um, it doesn't cost to have an MOU, but this is always an extra advantage. Various felicitations across India when I brought a German delegation to India or with this gentleman who owns whole of the city where 56 institutions are there. Various other organizations or companies, you know, Shemaru, which is an entertainment business, it's, it's Sony and Shemaru, they buy film rights. Owners of Shemaru or owners of Bagh Bakri Chai, if you drink tea, or Mahesh uh, Tutorials, the owner of Mahesh Tutorials, which has its presence in 126 cities in India. So all of this, um, and because of the work that I've been doing, I've been bestowed upon with the coveted uh, leadership award in year before last in San Francisco in America. This is with the mayor of San Francisco. And... Um, my contribution back to the society, this is in the rural, rural area of Kutch. It's in the westernmost part of uh, Gujarat. There is no water, nothing. And I catalyzed a lot of German funding for the medical NGOs there, also brought in the German consul generals for the fundings and so on. So I, I give back to the society as well. And now as we come to the last part of the presentation, the most important thing is that once you have finished your education in Germany, you can stay back in Germany and for up to 18 months just to look out for a job. So 18 months is to look out for a job. And let's say you got a job in Italy or Switzerland or France. Um, you can work there because you're getting something called as a Schengen visa. And uh, this study visa gets converted into a shed, uh, the work permit visa. And then depending on your work permit, you can extend that as long as your company supports you. The various companies that are hiring um, Indian or international students, these are companies that have brought a highlight. These are from different fields. And if you look at just one company like SAP, it's in the field of technology and the brand value is close to $50,000 million dollars or BMW or Benz or DHL, Audi, Bosch, Adidas, Siemens. Some of these companies uh, have a big presence in India, like Siemens is in India for more than 110 years. There are 7,500 German companies having a presence in India, wanting to come in India. Uh, there is so much uh, potential for international students to get their jobs. These uh, Lidl in India, it's Bajaj Alliance. Nivea, Deutsche Bank, Sparkas, or North Soups, or Lufthansa, Schwarzkopf, Puma, Puma and Shoes, or Otto, or Kaufland, Chibo, Ergo, Ergo is an insurance, Reva, Hyperframes Bank, uh, Ritter Sport, Chocolates, Aral is in Motor Fuels, and so much more. And not just the German corporations, even American um, corporations. If you know SpaceX from Tesla, they are setting up a plant in Berlin, in Germany. And um, Elon Musk is going to hire international students to the tune of 12,000. So you could be studying in Germany and then working for America. Isn't that wonderful? So the world is one global village. And now let us understand the bottom line that Germany is a very accessible market, but still untapped. Germany offers popular study fields like engineering, mechanical, automobile, and so much more. But not just that, in various other fields like IT, economics, management, uh, logistics, um, so much more. English is a medium of instruction. There's opportunity to work. It is free to affordable tuition fees. Its internships are part-time. 
these are trouble free and there are employment opportunities and indians are so much welcome and ecs will help you by carving a niche for you by steering you through the myriad of possibilities to realize your career goals to help select the best institutions for you propel you to embark on a journey that's very very satisfying and rewarding in guiding you through the various barriers of language and culture and how do you contact us this is our email address it's queries at exponentconsultants.com i repeat uh, if you all have a phone take a photo of this it's queries at the rate exponentconsultants.com and if you're interested please write us an email and send us your academic resume with your list of questions don't write emails like hi i want to study in germany we don't know anything about you and what are we going to guide you through yeah so please help us help you better and all emails get answered in one business day so if you think you have uh, you've written to us but not received a reply then that means that reply is sitting in your spam folder and we would be so happy to hear from you give us a feedback just take a photo and this will take you directly to the feedback link uh, please take a photo right now and it will take you to the feedback link so i repeat please write to us um and um we'll be happy to guide you write us a feedback and it was absolutely phenomenal connecting and interacting with 600 plus uh, students from the nehru group of institutions in uh, tamil nadu and karnataka today and uh, today is a, a very very auspicious day it's the 11th 11 it's also ekadashi and um, the first day of uh, diwali so it's been wonderful and i enjoyed interacting with you all great ma'am um, i hope the presentation was useful and um, if there are questions i'm happy to take them yes ma'am it was really excellent ma'am yeah. and i think uh, a few uh, few questions were there i encourage students to ask me questions and um, i want to see your faces uh, when you speak up give your name show me your face and put up a question students dayson sir dayson sir can you unmute unmute yourself and uh, you uh, can you uh, ask your question so ma'am i would appreciate students asking their question first at least one question in chat box by uh, dayson sir all right Linguraj, yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yes, ma'am. Yeah, Tharani, ma'am. No, ma'am. I was about to ask about Linguraj's question only. Sure. I was about to call him. 